Land back. That can be a confusing term for people. Does it mean you're going to lose your home? Is someone going to kick you out? None of that's the case. The reason we talk about things like land back here in the United States and elsewhere is because that's what happened here to the indigenous people here before. We're not repeating our mistakes, we're correcting them. My name is Isaiah Hernandez and this is Queer Brown Vegan. My platform is to bring environmental education that's focusing on intersectional issues rather than ignoring them. If you like what you see here, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because it helps grow my channel and bring you more educational content. Is land back a good idea? First of all, returning land to indigenous communities is an effort to recognize their rights that have been violated. I don't think the US government will ever be able to reconcile its injustices against the indigenous peoples of North America, but they can start with something like land back. It's about more than the physical land. It's about righting wrongs, supporting their sovereignty and revitalizing culture. Why is this a good thing? I think when we're talking about what a successful society looks like, it's not one that ignores injustices and punishes those with less. We benefit from diversity. Diversity teaches us about the richness of life and a unique ways of being, which carries inspiration into our own stories. Native Americans also protect and cultivate the lands for generations to come, and they do that the same today. When we have so many environmental issues from the government in charge now, it's like, why haven't we handled it over by this point? Land back is one that governmental leaders can hope to account for past genocides. It benefits us all. Land back has evolved into many different contexts. So let's talk about some actual examples of land back in action. One way non-Indigenous people are materially supporting land back movement is by paying monthly or annual fees to the Indigenous peoples whose lands they occupy. Real Rent Duwamish RRD created by the Duwamish Solidarity Group DSG in 2017 is one such project. DSG is a working group within Seattle's Coalition of Anti-Racist Whites. It is in their own words an effort to develop authentic relationships with the Duwamish people and support them in ways that they determine best to achieve justice and community. The Sogo Reati Land Trust was launched in 2015 by two Indigenous women, Karina Gold and Jonella Labrose. A land trust is a nonprofit organization that acquires land in order to help protect it, and the Sogora Te is just one of many land trusts on Turtle Island that are returning land to the indigenous communities. Land back may not always look like returning physical land though. It can also mean that indigenous people are able to exercise their rights to self-government on their lands and enforce laws and regulations in the way they see fit. The Tisokota Nation, and I'm so sorry for my mispronunciation, is a great example of an indigenous nation asserting rights and jurisdictions over the land. The nation is compromised of six member communities located in so-called British Columbia. In 2014, the Dushkanas Nation inherited rights to self-governance, which was inferred by the Supreme Court in 2018. The Tishkanatan introduced regulations that required all non Tishkanutan people to acquire permits in order to harvest morel mushrooms on their land, which all foragers should be angry about. The next time someone is confused about land back, send them this video and let them see for themselves. And again, I apologize for the mispronunciation on this video. For a lot of non-Indigenous people, especially young people who may not have access to land, may not have access to extreme wealth or understanding the ways in which their environment has been heavily influenced by the display placement of indigenous people is that some of the simple ways I always remember telling people is that someone that grew up here in California is that I am a visitor of this land. This is not my native land. I am someone whose family has been displaced um, via genocide too in Latin America. And I have, but essentially what I would say is I've become landless. Um, however, one of those things that I'm very committed in honoring my ancestors who lived is always standing in the rights for indigenous sovereignty and indigenous communities to ensure that those who are still existing today because we need to remember not to talk about indigenous people with past tense because they are here today and I know that I've messed up in the past when I've said this but I think it's important for us to recognize that land back is more than just giving land physical back to people it's about the ways that we nurture those relationships the ways that we honor and it's not just um, stopping with the land acknowledgement and say like this is the Tongva land of Los Angeles and we honor the indigenous people it's more about how are we making sure that the 
those elders who are indigenous communities who are here are being taken care of? Are we giving them financial resources or mental health resources or friendships, right? Like I think connection is such a lifeline in our communities. And I think that a lot of non-indigenous people often feel that they have to be shamed away um, for either being a settler or colonizer. And I think that we need to be able to have very critical and rough discussions because at the end of the day, we need to understand that we stand on indigenous land today and that it is our moral duty as environmentalists today that we have to stick up and show up for indigenous communities. And I think that undoing white supremacy and the ongoing genocides that have happened everywhere across the world is that if we don't start to have those conversations, these people are going to be erased from history books. These people are going to be forcibly displaced from their communities. And that is why land back is so essential. It's not about a buzzword. It's not about about, oh, they're just trying to take away our land. It's about recognizing that the power imbalances that have existed for decades that have done so much harm to indigenous communities must be restored and that relationship must be repaired in order for us to also repair our relationship to Mother Earth in the ways that we are dealing right now with the ecological crisis. Thanks for watching and be sure to like the video, leave a comment with anything else you want me to talk about and subscribe to the channel if you like what you saw. What do you think about land back? Do you practice land back? And what are the ways in which you wanna see the conversations around land back hitting your own school?